Hello, I'm Monty Beatham, and I appreciate you choosing once a warrior. My guest today is just the 12th player in the Warriors history to captain the side. He is our current captain, Tool Harris. Thanks for your time, brother. No worries. Thanks for having me. What does it mean to wear the Warriors jumper and also to lead? Oh, having that role is obviously a, a huge honour and a privilege. Look, um, you, you would know the feeling, and, and it's made so because of, of the people who've held that role before me. So, like players like yourself, Dean Bell, mm. Simon, Roger, um, some special, special uh, players and people who have who have led the club before me, and and yeah, I, I knew the the weight of it and yeah. and the responsibility it is, and I knew that if I was going to take it on, then I had to make sure I was doing the right things and and not just as something that's a token role to have. It, it had to mean something, so hopefully I'm doing that and making sure I'm doing everything possible to sort of hold the legacy up that that the guys before me have held. You know, to get thrown something like that so late in your career was such <laughs> importance. Um, it couldn't have been easy. Um, what have you done to, um, you know, to help you on that growth and that journey? Who did you go to for support? Oh, I've, I've been pretty fortunate to have some special captains um, mm -hmm. in teams that I've played for and just things that, are, that I've observed and how they go about their role. And my wife's huge for me being able to talk to her. I, I, she probably has heard me speak about footy and things like that enough, but she was a massive support for me, letting me be able to express myself. I've watched from afar, other people have come on and commented on your style of captaincy. What do you think your style is? How I approach it is, I just try and be myself as much as I can, and I, and I hope that, I guess, people see, see me doing that, seeing that I, I'm myself, I'm not, not gonna try and be something I'm not, and Hopefully they get confidence out of that and they could, that makes them feel more comfortable that they can be themselves and I feel like that's how you can sort of be the best version of yourself is if you're actually being yourself and make sure that I'm not just being too relaxed in terms of my standards and things like that but being myself no matter what the situation is, no matter um, where we are, just making sure I am who I am and um, what you see is what you get. Well, to who you are definitely one that they follow on the field, and it's probably because of moments like these. Still going! Tohu Harris goes all the way! Tohu! Tears through! This is Harris. Yeah, right, beautifully to lead on! Harris keeps it alive! Harris has held Tupanu up. That's a great tackle. Here comes a go for Harris! Tohu Harris! That should seal it! Short ball. ball there. Oh, beautiful pass! Here's Harris! 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 Tohu Harris, the captain! Tohu, now that's a highlight package and it could go on and on and on. Um, thoughts when you watch that back? Yeah, well, it looked like I was having fun, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, I wish... Uh, it's funny watching it. Um, I guess my career's changed a little bit from you know, scored a few tries at the beginning there and then and then turned into um, my role changes a little bit and started passing more and and I guess trying to help other other people sort of have those moments but um, yeah like some special moments and a lot of a lot of fond memories there. Okay when we mentioned special let's go back to the Broncos game last year result aside uh, to be able to captain the side lead the side out in that jumper um, at home um, in the Hawks Bay. Uh, what did that mean to you, man? Well, that was really special. Um, being able to take the, the Warriors back back to where I'm from, back to my Marae in Waipatu and and my whole family sort of welcoming them on, onto the Marae and, and then run out in front of them. I think it, it meant so much to everyone back home, or all, all the players so they could feel it. Like when we were at the Marae and, and the day of the game, they could sort of just feel how much it meant to everyone in, in the area and being able to witness them sort of show their emotions through a haka, it's um, you know, something that I think everyone in the whole club felt. Yeah, it's, it's something that will stick with me you know, long past the, me retiring and such a special feeling. And, and I know that not everyone gets to like, have those experiences and, and take their team back home to their, where they're from. So, um, yeah, very lucky. Did you always play our great game, man? No, not, not always. I, I 
was all rugby union growing up, um, right up until I left school. I got picked up by Melbourne because I attended the uh, rugby league camp they used to hold in Wellington. Yeah. Um, so I think I might have attended the very first one they ever held and was fortunate enough to be uh, one or two players given a scholarship to be a part of the Melbourne Storm. That's when I sort of um, tuned in a bit more and, and um, tried to understand what I was getting myself into. Were there any sort of thoughts or, or phone calls from this side trying to get you back? <laughs> not, not for a while, to be honest. Um, like Melbourne quickly became my home. That's where um, I met my wife and, and we, sort of, we started our family there. And, and it wasn't until after a few years playing in the Kiwis that Mooks flicked me a text and said, you and Nat, have a little think about if you could see yourself playing here in New Zealand. And we had some real hard conversations um, of how it would look. Obviously, family being in, in Melbourne, her, her whole family, um, we were very, very close to them. My family are back in Hastings, so we didn't have any immediate support in Auckland. We knew the challenge it was going to be, but it was something that we wanted to, wanted to take on and have our son grow up in New Zealand and mm. learn a bit more about our own cultures and getting out of my comfort zone because um, it was very comfortable in, in Melbourne, um, playing with some of the players that they had there. I, it sort of become easy and went with the flow of things. So jumping into a new team with a different system, all that sort of stuff, trying to become a leader. It was a challenge that I really wanted to take on, but we felt how much of a family club the Warriors were. It wasn't, it wasn't just the players that we're taking care of, it was our, our whole family. And we you know, jumped in head first and, and have loved it. Well, Tohi, you would have thought after the first five rounds that you were going back to another grand final uh, with the Warriors. It was five wins in a row. Uh, the first one, obviously, was uh, getting a huge grill off your back in terms of beating Souths away. First time in that jumper, man. How, how did it feel? What are your memories of your debut? Yeah, it was, uh, it was over, in, over in Perth playing um, a really good Rabbitoh side. I remember we just had so much fun playing. It, it took you back to when you were younger, throwing the ball around footy was fun it wasn't such a, a task to do you you ran out there you had fun with with your friends and and it showed in how we played like we threw the ball around especially us on the right edge we um, threw caution to the wind and threw the ball around had fun and it was one of the most fun years of my career along with last year when you put that jumper on then and, and particularly the next game at home um, against, against Gold Coast Titans did it feel any different? Yeah, that, that was special, the, the first home game. So there's something about Mount, Mount Smart. The feeling you get there and, and the, the feeling you get from the fans that watch it, it means a little bit more. Getting the first win there was, was special and it was one of those pleasing wins that we went through some tough moments. We had to defend our line and, and I think that's what spurred that start of the year on was we had that defensive resolve as well and, and that's when you get that real good feeling playing footy is when you can break teams through through your defence and then you have fun with the ball. Some of these guys you played with in the Kiwis, but to, to play in the Warriors jumper week in, week out, were there differences or, or new things that you learnt about guys uh, that you had known for some time? Yeah, yeah, just just how it all sort of moulded together and, and the differences in people like, um, you know, Peter Hickey, he's a, he's a character <laughs> and he's got no care in the world. He's sort of just plays what he sees and being able to combine with him was funny at times because he never took anything seriously, but didn't want to change him too much because it's what he sort of brought to the team. Um, he put Fuss away for 20 something tries, just how silky he was and threw caution to the wind and, and just played footy and you didn't want to didn't want to stop that from happening. Oh, this is obviously Shawnee that, that first year and just how he plays sort of suited the rest of us. At times we didn't know what he was going to do, so we sort of just had to play what we saw and that's, I guess, why we had so much success with me, Pat, and, and Fuss got to score so many tries off the back of it, Dewey. So Simon, just the rock in, in the middle there for so long, just what he meant to the club and how every player looked at him and you, you never wanted to let him down probably the definition of a warrior. The person he is, such a good person, he's down to earth, the things that he would do to, to help someone else, um, the effort he would put in, just putting his body on the line each and every week. He sort of embodied the warrior more than yeah. more than anyone um, that I played with. Well, you had Roger there who is all energy all the time, he's just all effort. He's another one, like you see the effort he puts in, it spurs you on to do it as well. And yeah, like th those guys, for me, coming to the club were, were the ones I sort of 
took that inspiration from. OK, so uh, 2018 return to the finals uh, series for the Warriors. Um, something that you're used to, uh, everything you've done and every year you've played. Uh, memories of, of that and how it felt? Well, it was a special feeling because the club hadn't been there for, for a little while and you know, it wasn't the result that, that we wanted. Although it wasn't as far as we wanted to go, we, we sort of felt like we did a good job of changing the direction of the club um, from where it had been. So I think that part made it feel special. We just, yeah, disappointed with with how we played in, in those big moments. Yeah. Second row versus lock. Uh, you come over as second row, scoring a lot of tries out on that edge. Um, what did you like? What did you dislike about that position? Well, compare <laughs> the two, lock versus uh, back row edge. Um, I like I like how much rest you get out in the back row. You're not in a in a washing machine, but playing lock, uh, get to be busy the whole game. Um, whether it's defending or attacking, you sort of feel like you're a part of the game and you have uh, the opportunity to, I guess, lead the team around. When you're in the middle, like the game is happening at you, and there's no point where you're not a part of it. So I feel like the impact you can have on it is so much more, and I enjoy that. I enjoy that that responsibility and and having that challenge. The competitive side of me loves that challenge creating space for someone else or linking up um, being able to get the ball to our halves where they want to get it rather than them coming in and and having to lead the team around they can sort of sit in those wider spaces play a little bit more with with the back rowers and the full backs and I can sort of get the ball to them so in the back row you get to have a lot more rest and then I guess pick and choose times where you get to use your energy and pick and choose the moments you inject yourself into the game Talk who you're ball playing, uh, especially in the middle, because I know at times you could have played six for the Kiwis. Uh, but was that always part of your game, or was that something that um, you really try to work on once you were here? No, that was something that has been part of my game from the beginning. Um, I grew up playing, obviously, rugby union. My family was big, big into like playing touch football, and yeah. had a couple of cousins who like played for New Zealand, so they always had us in modules and things like that. So passing the ball sort of was every every single day. Me and the cousins like playing against each other or with each other, and there was always passing different, different balls. So when I got to Storm, coming through under twenties as a back rower, they always encouraged it. You just didn't get the same opportunities, or as many opportunities in the back row as you do in the middle. So it's actually part of, part of the role now is to make sure that I get my hands on the ball and I can sort of. I guess put others in better positions. Okay, just give us um, what goes through your mind. You get that ball off Wade. Um, are you looking to run first? Are you looking inside shoulders? Have you determined what you're doing with, with shape or do you decide really late when you're going deep into the line? Well, yeah, the, fir the first thing is knowing where we are in the field and what shapes we can have off it. So, you know, different points in the field. So once, once we've organised shape, making sure I'm, my lead runner um, knows where I'm going to go and where he needs to be, know that there's a half out the back They've got to be ready. Um, it doesn't always happen, but I always try to start off with running like I'm going to be running the ball, um, just to try and engage them a bit more. But yeah, my eyes are always on the defenders uh, a little bit wider to see what they're going to do and trying to approach it with a real open mind, not have anything yeah. premeditated. Running towards the line as fast as I can, get some tempo to make sure I give myself time to see what they're doing and then executing a pass. That's as simple as I can put it. <laughs> the best make it simple, man. <laughs> With that ball playing ability, that engine, um, have you always had that engine or is there something you've worked on? I, th I think it's more the me being competitive and not wanting to, mm. to lose, sort of just forcing myself to just keep going. Um, not as fit as some people, not as strong or fast, but don't want to lose to them. Yeah. So, so I'll just exactly. try and keep pushing through, through the pain or um, whatever it is, find moments in the game where I can get a little rest and then just try and go again. But always having so much tape on you, mate. <laughs> yeah, how right. busted are you? And then, you know, how hard is it just to, to put that aside and turn up and, and do your thing again week in, week out? <laughs> I, I, I'm actually don't wear the most tape in the team. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> Who is it? It's just out on show. Mitch Barnett is oh, Mitch. like a... Okay. Two of got, the hardest men in the club. <laughs> he's got every joint taped up, but it's just a part of being a footy player is, is you've got to look after those certain things if you want to stay on the field so um, yeah it's it's not even a I guess a thought in, in our mind it's just something that is a part of being a footy player and, and you get into a routine of looking after your body and, and that's just one way of doing it. You mentioned Napier a uh, great time leading the boys out but you know a thousand and thirty days since uh, you had the opportunity to play at home and you lead the boys out 
um, your memories of, of that day. Being able to walk through the tunnel um, like the old, old Warriors teams had done and then what we walked out to was, was it was surreal, just the, the amount of blue in the stands. Um, everyone just, you could feel the, the passion everyone had and so it was real nice that we just took our time walking out to the field and, and then slowly running on to, to soak it all in and if you, you bring it up with any of the guys who experienced that, I think that's a moment Wherever they've been, whatever they experience in their careers, it's a moment that would definitely stick out to them. Tohu was a special game, the homecoming game. Like you said, you led them out, wonderful feel. But when you score the first try too, mate, talk to me about how you felt. Yeah, it felt, <laughs> felt really good because it doesn't happen often. But a specific play that me and Wade spoke about, because earlier on the game, I think we, we made a break and we almost scored and it didn't happen. I think Wade got held over. But we were attacking the line early in the game and... We both saw the same thing, uh, I guess, an opportunity. And the next the next break, we said, like, next time we're, we're in that exact opportunity, this is what we're going to do, yeah. And we, we both saw it, both spoke about it. And then, fortunately enough, we, we got down there, got in the exact same spot, and he didn't even look at anyone else. He, he knew exactly where he was going, and I didn't look at anyone else either. I just put the foot down, got over, and I never know what to do because it doesn't happen <laughs> often. So You hear about it at um, video on Monday. You're too excited. <laughs> no, you actually get an award if you do it now, so uh, yeah. the Rocco Berry Award. But, um, yeah, I, I don't often know what to do, so yeah. it's just thankful that Jazz did all the celebrating for me. Just on, Wade, um, how lucky are we to have a ball-playing hooker like that and just at the peak of his powers, and, and you, because, I mean, even watching your training sometimes, you don't know where the ball's going. Yeah, yeah, I know. It, it, he keeps you on your toes because he'd be looking at someone, pass goes the other way, or... Um, so defensively, it makes it very hard because um, he's so crafty, but I, I think the thing about Wade is, like, he's got all the skill in the world and he knows how to use it, and it helps our attack so much with the speed and the width of it, his craftiness and things like that sort of open up opportunities for himself and that's when he's really playing at his best is when he's taken on the line taken on the markers and I reckon off the mark he's probably one of the quickest in the team so um, when he's playing confident he's running the ball um, that's that's a good sign for us with the utmost respect and it's where Webby is on his journey now uh, and comparisons to um, one of the great um, Bellamy what do you see uh, that are similar what do you see in terms of traits that you like I think the thing that's similar is their, their attention to detail and how the standards are so important. Our training standards, even little things like physically ready to go before you step onto the grass um, and not coming out in shoes or things like that. And then I guess putting your boots once you're out there, you've got to be ready to go before you hit the, hit the field. And once you're on the field, everything's sort of about ticking off those things you need to do the, with that high standard. Very different personalities, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah the thing they share is, is their attention to detail and, and the standards they hold everyone to. Now, you mentioned being ready to go uh, with your boots and that, or in your case, before kickoff, no boots, no shoes. You like going out <laughs> in your bare feet. Talk to me around that, because I've seen that. You know, some cold, wet nights sometimes here in Auckland, man. <laughs> Just trying to work out what the conditions are and what boots to wear. So those are some sensitive feet. They, 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 they're like antennas. Give you an <laughs> Yeah, feel, that, feel if the field's wet or not. Just like being relaxed and feel what the grass is like, whether it's a slippery field, if it's muddy or whatever yeah. it is, because you know, what you see on TV is very deceiving. Um, yeah, yes. <laughs> so so you you got to get a feel for the field um, before you go out there. 2018, first year playoffs, and took a long time before we were in the playoffs again. The return to the playoffs, uh, where you belong as a player, your, 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 your ability, your memories of that. Yeah, again, it was one of those games that stick out as uh, playing Newcastle at home. And we wanted to make sure that whether we won or lost, we wanted to play, I guess, Warriors football, how we wanted to play. Not knowing that if we did that for long enough, we, we would have a real good chance of winning. And the, the first moment when we ran out, hearing the crowd, we couldn't hear each other. There were different moments defending the line where you know, you can't, you can't hear the person next to you and trying to communicate and yeah, it was, it was just a, a special moment and then hearing the crowd singing after the game, after we won, um, 
it's made it even more special. You mentioned there's no place like home, uh, Go Media Stadium, especially now uh, on the back end of what happened in 2023, but also doing that with milestone games and having Harlan, your son, next to you, and then uh, the way the club does it with um, other families and members. What, what, what does it mean to run out in the jumper and to share such a moment with uh, your little man? Yeah, he's not so little, by the way. Uh, yeah, he's grown fast, but um, yeah, it's special. Like run, running out there just in the norm game is, has got that feeling, especially being able to lead the club out, but being able to walk out with, uh, with my son, knowing my family's there, and it just adds so much more to it and got photos on our wall back home of that moment and it's it's every time I look at it, it sort of brings me back there and it, and it was such a, a proud feeling it's a special feeling just how yeah. loud everyone gets you can actually feel the feel the noise and yeah it's something I think it opened a lot of eyes for a lot of players mm. who played at different clubs it was a number of them saying that they just never felt anything like it and they've players who've played in grand finals for some big clubs and everyone still talks about it running running into some away stadiums and the home team getting booed and unreal. like that our support was unreal so everyone knew how much support we had at home but you know going away and just feeling that was I think it was sort of an eye opener to how much impact we're having on on people. Okay, let's go to the Panthers game this year, okay? And uh, you were injured, SJ was injured, uh, Roger was injured. There was a whole host of people injured. Uh, Magic round, uh, they turn up, they get a job done. Yeah, I, I was extremely proud. Like, seeing some of the young guys push through something that they probably hadn't experienced before, um, like Ali playing on one leg, mm. the old heads leading them around, like um, Mitch and Dylan, mm. Tamaiti playing the seven role. Like having an outstanding game, like a, a, like and seeing the young guys have that experience and being able to push through those those hard times and against such a quality side, like I, I was so proud in that moment. By the end of it, I felt like I played because I was <laughs> I was pumped up. <laughs> Sent them yeah. all a message and um, just couldn't wait to see them. Uh, Melbourne Storm, you've yet to beat them. How badly do you want to beat these guys, man? Yeah, very bad. <laughs> um, I, I love playing against them. Because I've been on the other side of it and I know how much mm. playing the Warriors means to that club. So being on the Warriors side, knowing full well that they're going to come with everything because of what it means to them. I just, yeah, want to get the win so badly. Yeah, but, yeah. but enjoying the moment, enjoying the game is, is what sticks out to me. Um, enjoying the challenge of it because knowing that they're one of the best clubs in the competition. They've got some of the best players and enjoying the challenge of taking them on and and hopefully getting a win very soon. Um, uh, that's something that I, I, yeah, I want a lot. <laughs> I can see it in your eyes, but <laughs> The year before you came uh, from the Storm, you won a grand final. Uh, qualities in this side, uh, do you see that this is a squad aside this year, in coming years, they can go on and win a grand final? Yeah, absolutely. Like the, the the club has has all the right mix of people, has all the right ingredients, I should say. And and often times I think about like the old teams that I've that I've played for and and the team that we've got now and the, the the talent level that we have is crazy. Even in the younger guys who sort of played one or two games, yeah, we've got the talent to do it. We've got the people. We've got the right environment. We've got the support. It's just, are we willing to, I guess, go the extra mile and put in the work? And, and that's what it comes down to. But yeah, we've, we definitely have the ability to do it. Getting me excited, Tohu. You're getting me excited. <laughs> All right, Tohu, once a warrior, always a warrior, mate. You've been one of the club greats and we thank you for your ongoing service, brother. No worries. Thanks, Mons. Thanks for having me. I'm Mons Beatham and thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week for another episode of Once a Warrior. This is Harris. Yeah, right, beautifully to lead off. Harris keeps it alive. Harris has held Tupanua up. That's a great tackle. Here comes a go for Harris. Torhu Harris. That should seal it. Pushes forward. Torhu Harris to score. Oh, Torhu Harris with the pass. Harris, short ball. Finds Harris. Oh, short ball. ball there. Oh, beautiful pass. Here's Harris. 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 Harris.